Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to welcome you to this exemplification of the charity, unity, and fraternity ceremony. This is a new experience for all of us. So bear with us as we go through this, okay? And we thank those of you who have been here for a while for your patience and waiting for everybody to get here. We'd like to open with a prayer. So we please stand in order to Father Joby tonight for all the all saints' prayers for this opening prayer. The Father. Of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you so love the world that you sent us your only Son to suffer, die, and rise for us and for our salvation. Give us the grace to daily encounter our Lord Jesus Christ with a living faith, and so come to know in our lives the power of his love. Let us find in his cross the strength to rise above our sins and to be confirmed in virtue, so that we may leave our vocations faithful and accomplish our work with integrity. Unite us, Lord, in the fraternity of the lives of Columbus, as we bear witness to Christ, serving the needs of our brothers in charity, and keeping the commandments in the spirit of the Beatitudes. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I found in the Knights of Columbus in 1882, Father Michael McGinley sought to establish a fraternal order. His members lived the Christian virtues by virtues of Christian values by virtues of charity and unity and fraternity. He sought to unite members of their Catholic identities in practical Catholics, that is, as Catholics who accept the teachings of, of the Catholic Church on the principles of the principles of faith and morality, and who aspire to live in accordance with the precepts of the Catholic Church and who are in good standing with the Catholic Church. By your presence here today, we pledge that this is your understanding and intention of joining the Knights of Columbus. At the time of our founding, Catholics in America faced discrimination and bigotry. Many immigrants were challenged by a hostile society that considered them outsiders and did not worthy of full citizenship. Often, these Catholics were tempted. To abandon their faith and make a sacrifice. <clears throat> the father was the family's primary wage earner, with no social support network available to him. Frequently, his untimely deaths were catastrophic events. His widow and children faced financial ruin and the breakup of the family, removed from their family's home. Children often found themselves removed from the faith. Yet, in the face of all these challenges, Father McGinley was determined to find a way to strengthen the faith and the families of his fellow Catholics. Father McGinley's vision established an organization of local councils <clears throat> whose members sought to strengthen their faith, serve the needs of the others, and to protect their families through our insurance program. The first members of our order chose the name Columbus to emphasize that from the earliest days of the European exploration of America, Catholics had played an essential role in their country. Christopher Columbus was a revered hero in the 19th century who inspired the names of cities throughout the United States, including the nation's capital, as well as the province of Canada and the country of Latin America. <coughs> Those early knights recognized Christopher Columbus not only as an explorer of extraordinary skill and daring, but as a layman committed to bringing the good news of the gospel to the new world. Our founding fathers chose to be called knights in recognition of the historic mission of Christian knights, men who led lives of virtue, defended the faith, and served those in need. In medieval times, when Christians took up arms and put on their armor, they understood that they were putting on the armor of our Lord Jesus Christ in order to serve a higher call. A knight was committed to the cardinal virtues of prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. He was willing to sacrifice himself for others especially the poor and the better. Although times have changed, this higher calling is not. Today we do not put on armor made by fire and food, but as we are still called to put on the armor of Christ. We are called, as St. Paul tells us, to stand firm with integrity as a breastplate, <clears throat> carrying the shield of faith, wearing yeah. salvation as a helmet, and carrying the word of God as a sword. Our church still is in need of men dedicated to this mission, men willing to be the strong arm of the church. 
The Knights of Columbus is a brotherhood in service to the Catholic Church, bound together by our principles of charity, unity, and fraternity. And for Knights of Columbus, these principles find their origin in meeting in the Holy Eucharist. United to Christ in the Eucharist, as we go forward seeking Christ in each other and in those that we serve. Listen now to the lesson of the charity. Gentlemen, the first and foremost principle of our order is charity, the greatest of all virtues and the crowning glory of a Christian life. But the true meaning of charity is often lost today. It is not merely a feeling, nor solely a gift of time, talent, or treasure. It is more than almsgiving. It is more than good works. The greatest act of charity the world has ever known is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who freely and willingly offered himself for us on the cross. Christ's redeeming love is the true measure of charity. Charity is a heart that sees Christ in our neighbor. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can, like Christ, make a sincere gift of ourselves to others. Charity is the, is the virtue that gave rise to chivalry. It is the essence of knighthood. A Christian knight without charity was regarded as unworthy of his high calling. Charity is that priceless gift placed by God in the human soul to measure man's allegiance to his creator. Charity is a duty, not a courtesy. It is an obligation imposed by heaven upon poor and rich alike. Charity moves the heart to comfort and console, advise and instruct, bear and forgive. In God and with God, we love even those we do not know. This is the charity that evangelizes. This is the charity that gladdens the heart. Charity is our authentic witness to God, to what he works. Charity is a stronger, greater service of the community when we are all united. So listen now to the lesson on unity. Gentlemen, to be a knight of Thomas means you possess unity of purpose and unity of action, which comes from a shared Catholic faith and the grace of the Holy Spirit. It is appropriate that unity follows our first principle of charity, since charity binds together everything in perfect harmony. The unity of our order is founded in the sacred unity of our church, which arises from the unity of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our unity expresses our belief in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, the Father of us all. The principle of unity is first experienced at home. Marriage is a unique and irreplaceable sign of God's love for his church. The faithfulness and fruitfulness of married love is the foundation of the family. And the Christian family is an icon of the loving communion within the Blessed Trinity. <coughs> Brother Knights and the families encourage one another to establish loving homes that cultivate virtue and holiness. In a divided world where many find it difficult to encounter God, Knights of Columbus families live their faith 
fulfill their mission and evangelize the world. History often encounters examples of small groups of men who are summoned to overwhelming odds because they were joined together for a common purpose. It is not the size of an army that determines victory. Since our strength comes from heaven, Christ calls us to unity with him and with each other, to increase the unity in our church and ourselves is one of the great missions of the Knights of Columbus. Our order prays and works to bring about the unity our Lord wills for his church and for our families. <clears throat> when we stand united, our order is a force for the defense of our faith, our families, and one another. Jesus told his disciples, remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit unless it is, remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because Without me, you can do nothing. Now, we will impress upon you the strength men possess when united in the pursuit of a common purpose. And please, please stand. For the warden, the strip of violence to the candidates. please turn and face the audience. <clears throat> Gentlemen, the great fiber you have received. Gentlemen, please be seated. One observes when individual fibers are brought together because they form a strong cable. As the fiber is to the cable, so are you to this our order. <clears throat> the strength and durability of the cable depends upon the quality of the fiber and its perfect union. Dedicated to the principle of unity, we pray with our Lord that his followers may all be one. Long ago, Father, forgive me for causing an ideal model of unity for the Catholic Methodist parish. He envisioned the fraternal brotherhood, Catholic men supporting each other and their families, united in Christ and building up his body. His vision continues today as his order works to strengthen Catholic families and parishes. Listen now to our lesson on the Trinity. Gentlemen, the Don of Columbus is a man. Of integrity. He takes the responsibilities for his actions. He is also a man for others. He guards and protects those under his care. He stands united with his brothers, and with them, he puts his faith into action. The Knight of Columbus is called to fraternal charity with his brother knights. He is called to a fraternal unity with them. In Psalms 133 proclaims, How good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together as one. United in baptism and the Eucharist, knights of one stand ready as brothers to bear one another's burdens. When there is spiritual and material needs, 
We assist one another by prayer, counsel, practical support. Our Lord calls us to fraternal communion and to encourage one another. We follow the counsel of St. John the Evangelist, who told us, whomever does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God who he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Our bond of paternity is not merely a lofty principle. It is a way of life for a steadfast night of peace. Strengthened by the Holy Spirit. It is the respect Responsibility of every non Columbus council to be an exemplary model of Catholic fraternity. In times past, a candidate for knighthood would not spend the eve before his knighting in a church upon his knees, placing his sword and his shield before the altar of the King of Kings, his Lord God. Today, Knights of Columbus continue to serve this King, Christ the King, truly present in the Eucharist. While founded as an organization of Catholic laymen, our order has always had a special relationship with our priests. But we owe our very existence to the vision and determination of one parish priest, Father Michael J. McGibbon, whose heroic virtue continues to inspire us today. The Knights of Columbus was, is, and always shall be a brotherhood in solidarity with our priest whose mission makes Christ present to us in the Eucharist. You heard that the virtue of charity is the guiding principle of our work. I refer that there is strength when men work in unity for a common cause. And you have heard that fraternity is the guiding fellowship with Christ and with our brother names. As Catholics, we know that death does not have the final word. Our fraternal greeting, be thy Jesus, which means may Jesus live, is a greeting that we recognize one another as brother knights, and we profess the hope by which we are all saved. The perpetual watchword, password, if you will, of our order is Temple Student, Memento Mori, which means time flies, remember death. We must remain vigilant, for we know not the day nor the hour when we will be called to give an account of our life. <laughs> We must prepare for our death spiritually, and it is our duty to protect those who have been entrusted to our care by God, to be good stewards and to safeguard the future. The financial protection of our families remains fundamental to our Father to give his vision and to the mission of the Knights of Columbus. Now, to profess your commitment to our principles, I now ask that all candidates and all the Brother Knights here stand. <laughs> Raise your right hand and respond, I do, to the following question. Do you promise to conduct yourself as a Catholic gentleman to live your life guided by the principles of charity, unity, and fraternity? I do. As practical Catholics, do you promise to continue to form yourself in the Catholic faith, to live in accordance with the precepts of the Catholic Church, and to participate in the sacramental life, especially through attendance at Sunday Mass? I do. Do you promise to promote the well being of your brother knights and who Support the mission and activities of your council. I do. Having reviewed, reviewed and signed the constitutional rule, you promise to obey the laws, rules, and lawful authority of our work. I do. Gentlemen, your promises have been hereby accepted. Please lower your hand and be seated. Let us now invoke the protection of 
the Blessed Virgin Mary. As Knights of Columbus, return always to the gentle and glorious Virgin Mary, our Queen and our Mother. Our order is entrusted to her protection to the Blessed Virgin and her title, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mary's love encircles us all, drawing us ever closer to her divine Son. Under the mantle of her protection, we take up her holy rosary. Mary, Mother of God, with her knights, with the sanctity of human life in all of its stages. Mary, part of the Holy Family, with her knights, for faithful marriages and joyful families. Mary, the Immaculate Conception, with her knights, for decency and purity in our world. Mary, to whom her son would refuse nothing, with her knights, for justice and compassion for the downtrodden and all those who suffer. Her holy rosary in our hand, going where we go, the salutation, Hail Mary, ever on our lips. What challenge can we not face? What victory can we not achieve? And now I put our investing officers forward and bless you with the rosary and the assembly of our work. Our investing officers are our district deputy, Dominic. Home, Dr. Khan, and our Mary Knight, Mike. Some of you may wonder why <coughs> 14 of these men received the in It's because the other 40 gentlemen are candidates already received the emblem of rosary during the first degree ceremony, which was taken in the past. This ceremony is a departure from all the old degrees that we had in the Christmas Center. I'm not telling you what else going on here. Does anybody know what was happening? <laughs> anyway, all 54 of these gentlemen are now fourth degree members of our world. Remember that the saints did not confirmation by the sword, but by prayer and good works. Members of our order have been raised to the honors of the altar, the yeah. saints, and blessed. The world continues to need saints. As the Knights of Columbus offers each of us today the opportunity to live a life of prayer and virtue by the grace of the Holy Spirit. We have witnessed the Witness the promises that you have made here today. Let them challenge you to live your life from this day forward, holding fast to our principles of charity, unity, and fraternity, so that on the last day, your soul is filled with happiness and enjoy the reward of a life well spent in eternity in the presence of God Himself. Everyone, please stand for the closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, shepherd of the poor, and of the kingdom of the world, and to all of your priests, our knights, and witnesses, be an apostle of the Christian promise of life, and to be the God, and the blessed servant of the family of God. Through the example of his life and conversion, may we call out to your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to fill the millions of families with the charity, and will the conscience. Let the inspiration of your servant honor us in greater confidence in your love, so that we may continue this work of care and deed and confidence. 
Do you have one? And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Just one.